In this video, we're going to talk about basic vector math. Um, and we'll start with the easiest uh, operation, which is vector multiplication by a scalar. So imagine you have some vector a with a magnitude of a, which the length of the arrow represents, and some angle theta. Well, what would two times that vector look like, or twice that vector be? Maybe this vector is a velocity, and later on you have twice the velocity. Well, the angle wouldn't change. Instead, the length of the arrow would double. And you would write this two times the vector a. That's it. That's multiplication by a scalar. Um, in fact, things that do this to vectors are called scalars because they scale the vector by some factor. So this is scaling our vector up. You can also multiply by a fraction and scale it down. Let's do some examples. Find the magnitude and direction of 2a1 and half of a1. Well, let's start by finding the magnitude and direction of a1. Okay, and we'll write it in this form where we find the magnitude, comma, the direction. The angle should be pretty obvious. Um, it, it's just 45 degrees. Um, but the magnitude, it looks like we've got um, an x component of 2 and a y component of 2. So the magnitude of a1 would be the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared. So the square root of uh, 8, which is 2.82, mm, we'll just say 2.8. Okay, so that's the magnitude of the vector. Um, 2 times a1 would simply just be this vector with the same angle. So 45 degrees would be the same, only it would be twice as long, meaning it would go here. So now I have x components of 4 and 4. Uh, so the magnitude, here I'll do that down here, the magnitude of 2a1 is the square root of 4 times 4, which is um, the square root of 32, or we'll say 5.6. And you might notice, oh, well, that's just 2 times 2.8. So we don't even really have to do that process to figure out the magnitude. We can just scale that magnitude, multiply it by 2. So half of a1, if I get rid of all of this stuff, half of a1 would only go here. That would be 1 half a1. And in that case, I would have a magnitude of half of 2.8, uh, which is 1.4. And this was an x component of 1 and a y component of 1. So if we did do the math, be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is just the square root of 2. Sorry, 2, which is half of the square root of 8. So 1.4 and 45 degrees magnitude. Okay, so again, the angle is the same. The only thing that changes is the magnitude of the vector. From uh, 2 to 0.8, we multiplied it by 2, so it's 5.6. And when we halved it, it was 1.4. So now let's talk about vector addition. Vector addition is, is really easy once you get the hang of it. Um, and there are a few various ways to add vectors together. The two most common um, are known as head to tail and the parallelogram method. So let's talk about the head to tail. Both work fine. So the head to tail method is when you have two vectors. So let's say you have A and you would like to add b, then the vector a plus b is uh, going to come from adding these two vectors head to tail. So here's what it looks like. We start here. We've got a. So that's a. Then we add b um, with the tail of b, that's that end, starting at the head of a, meaning head to tail. So would look like this. Now our sum, the sum of these vectors, 
is the line that connects the tail of your first vector to the head of your last vector. And it points right there. So this vector here would be a plus b. Um, sometimes we call that the resultant, or we use the phrase the vector sum. Now, interestingly, another way um, to, to think about this addition is by drawing a parallelogram. This is called the parallelogram method. Parallel, so many L's, parallelogram. The parallelogram method is really useful for when the vectors kind of all start at the same spot. So what you would do here, here's A, here's B, um, is instead of arranging them head to tail, you would arrange them tail to tail. So A and then B, like that. Then with those two vectors, you create a parallelogram where all of the sides are parallel. Then the diagonal of that parallelogram is your resultant sum. Now you notice that we would get this exact same shape if we just did the head to tail method again, but starting with B. So if I drew B here, that's B, and then A um, with its tail at B's head, then I would make a parallelogram. So either of these are fine graphical ways for adding two vectors together. And it emphasizes the, um, the fact that if you're going to add them head to tail, it actually doesn't matter which order you start, uh, because you can do B plus A or A plus B. Um, you'll get to the same spot. Let's do an example. Find the magnitude and direction of A1 plus A2. So since this is nicely drawn on a graph for me, um, I'm just going to go ahead and do the head to tail method. I can take A2 and I can draw it with the tail starting at the head of A1. So that would look like this. So now I know that the sum of these two vectors, which we can call the resultant or the vector sum, starts at the tail of A and points right there. So this is my vector a2 plus or a1 plus a2. Now notice that these vectors have the same letter a, um, but then different subscripts one and two. This is common for things like velocities and forces, where you use v for all velocities and a subscript to, you know, talk about which velocity is which. The same for force. Whenever you label vectors like this, they all have the same letter. Um, it's it's kind of messy to write a1 plus a2. So a little math notation that we'll start using um, is we'll use a math letter that means sum. And that is the letter sigma. This is the Greek letter sigma. And it means sum. So we'll call our new vector, which is the resultant or the sum, sigma a and it will be a1 plus a2. So I'll call this vector sigma a. That's how I'll label it. Um, and when I write about it, that's how I'll write the magnitude and direction. So to find um, the magnitude of this vector, sigma a, I'm sorry, let's write that there, theta, I would need to do tangent inverse of the y component over the x component, um, which I'm going to call sigma a y and sigma a x. So the y component and the x component are going to be positive 2 and positive 2. So when I find 
uh, the angle, it should give me 45 degrees, which hopefully that looks like pretty clear. Okay, then the magnitude, which we would write that by taking A away, an arrow away from A, the magnitude is going to be that x component, 2 squared, plus the y component, 2 squared, which we've already done. This gives us 2.8. So the magnitude and direction uh, is 2.8 and 45. If we wanted, we could write this um, in our notation 2.8 comma 45 degrees. It's the magnitude and direction of the vector. And if I get rid of some of this extra stuff on the graph, it might be helpful for me to remember this is the same place, the same result that I would get to if I first started with A2 and then added A1 head to tail. And again, notice that my resultant, this sigma A, that it is the diagonal of a parallelogram that's created with these two vectors. So now let's talk about vector subtraction, which is sort of an application of both um, multiplication by a scalar and then addition. The idea is really simple. If I have two vectors, A and B, so I'll say minus B, um, what I'm actually going to do is Think of this not as subtraction, but think of it as a sum and use the head to tail method or parallelogram method. Only now I'm going to have to change B. And instead of writing A minus B, I'm going to write A plus negative B. Now we already talked about what it is that a scalar does. Negative would be a scalar, right? So this is almost like saying negative 1 times B. So all that that's going to do is take our vector v and flip it, which would look like this. Okay, so now I can add these, um, which would give me, here's a, and then b, instead of going to the right, goes to the left. And I would find the resultant sum um, by starting from the tail of A and drawing to the head of B. This would be my vector A minus B, or A plus negative B. In this example, we're going to find the magnitude of A1 minus A2. So now, instead of um, taking 2, a2 and adding it head to tail, we're going to take the opposite. And A2 would point here. So that's negative A2. And my resultant starts here at the tail of A1 and points to the tail of A2. Now because we are adding these together, we can still call it a sum. We would just need to be careful to write A1 plus negative A2. And we could call that sigma A. This will have two components, sigma AX and sigma AY. AX is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. AY is 2. So the angle, tangent inverse, of the Y component 6 over the X, sorry, 2 over 6. That gives me 18.4 degrees. And then the magnitude is going to be the square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared, which gives me 6.3. So I would write this, the vector A, the sum of those two vectors. Again, the sum of A1 plus negative A2, so it's still a sum, um, as 6.3 comma 18.4 degrees. Great job. You are awesome. This video is over.